internet i'm hazel today is monday it is december the 28th and we're gonna do a quick holiday catch or post holiday catch up vlog because i was gonna make a vlog either on christmas the friday or the saturday following and i ended up doing none of the above so we're catching up right now and the first thing i want to say is i hope you all had a very happy holiday whatever holidays you celebrate or don't celebrate i hope you at least had a wonderful weekend and uh, i know i did i successfully made christmas eve dinner uh, for my in-laws that came to visit and uh, and we had dinner with them and that was really really lovely They're awesome awesome people. So that's always kind of fun and I didn't burn anything. I didn't explode anything I'm a perfectly capable cook. I'm not like a really good cook, but I can cook just fine So I don't know why I'm always expecting like horrible disasters But whenever there's pressure like if I'm ever actually cooking for anybody other than just me and my husband I get all nervous and like start envisioning the absolute worst case scenarios that have like house fires and people jumping from windows and like, you know, weird, weird omens, prophecies happening and smoke that's coming up from a pan on the stove. Uh, and none of that happened. It was just a really nice dinner. So that was good. And then for Christmas, uh, my husband, he got me, he got me two things. He got me a set of Game of Thrones wax seal coasters. They have the, uh, there's I think six of them and they have like Game of Thrones, um, the A Song of Ice and Fire house sigils on them, which is really cool. This is the Targaryen one. Uh, fire and blood this one stays on my desk i have the uh, the tyrell and the stark ones on my coffee table and then the other ones are, are waiting for waiting waiting for a home still but these are great they are non-slip which is nice they're like rubber but they're made to look like wax seal when i first saw them they were there was tissue paper in between each one i'm like oh god are these actually wax because if somebody made a real coaster made of legit wax that's a terrible idea and i'm going to ruin it but no it's it's, it's rubber and it's and it's uh looks like wax and even though it is like a indent on the coaster it doesn't actually it's like shallow enough that it's not going to tip over your mug so i have been using those i don't really need like he knows me he knows me so well i love anything a song of ice and fire related and i love using coasters i don't need to use coasters all of our furniture is real cheap and hasn't been damaged by the use of uncoastered mugs and cups anyways but now i have some so if i ever do have a nice piece of furniture i'll probably find a way to ruin it independently of owning coasters but at least i own coasters so there's that and he got me slippers he got me slippers i'm wearing them can i show you without like falling off my chair they're pandas they're little cutie panda slippers and they got their little tongue sticking out and they're super warm and i love them to bits they have um they have like elastic that goes around my foot so they don't fall off my feet which is good because I'm always losing my slippers. I'm always like, I'll sit down at my desk and I'll look at my feet and like one of my feet's kind of cold. And I've got a cold foot and, I'm, and I lost a slipper somewhere. And I'm like, man, I don't know where that slipper went. It just like, I was walking around the kitchen or something. It just kind of fell off my foot and didn't notice. These ones stay on my feet and they're really warm and they're super cute. So I, he got me some awesome stuff for Christmas. Um, I got him a copy of Disgaea 5 and he's been playing that quite a lot over the weekend. He offered to let me try it last night. I was looking for something to do and he's like, you can make your own Disgaea save. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. It, um, it looks like, a, it's, it's a lot like Fire Emblem. It's one of those tactical turn-based uh, team strategy games where you like recruit characters, you level them up, and then you can kind of like f enter fights on a grid. Um, and it's sort of like an anime, anime style. I've never played a Disgaea game for, before. I played a lot of Fire Emblem, but it didn't really look like my thing. So I'm going to leave that one to him. But uh, yeah, Christmas was awesome. And uh, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit glad, a little bit, little bit glad that it's over. It was, it's nice to be able to go... Everything was kind of crazy outside for a while. You know how around Christmas time, you know, the, the streets get crazy, shopping gets crazy. You just kind of hide, like, I, I we kind of hide for a couple days and lay low and just try and try and not have to go do anything that's going to turn into anything super stressful. So that is behind us. Everything was very smooth and lovely. And that was that. Um, in WoW holidays, uh, I got real sick of the dailies to do, to try and get the Grumpus mount. Of course, of course, the, it, I don't think it's actually that rare. Um, one of my guildies has gotten three of them, and I think most of the other ones have gotten at least one just doing the dailies and they're like two or three alts a day. I have a lot. I have at least ten characters that I can do that on every day. And I did it on all ten characters for about four days, and then I was like, no, I'm done. This is awful. I don't want to fly out of Frostfire Ridge anymore. If I was Horde, it might be different, but I got sick of that real quick. So I just bought a minion of Grumpus from the auction house for like 55k. Uh, and that was, that was like a couple days before the 25th, so I have not checked the prices of Minion of Grumpus since then. I don't want to. I don't want to know if it gets cheaper than that on my server. I just don't want to know. I just wanted to have it. He's super cool. He's very grumpy. Um, I like riding around him. He's huge, of course. So I'm probably not going to use him all the time. But he's a super grumpy dude, and I like him. And I don't want to know if they get any cheaper than that. I got mine at 55k. I'm happy with that price. I don't want to know. <laughs> um... I finished leveling my monk, actually, um, also this week. I think I did that. 
I have no idea, but since the last time we've chatted, I finished leveling my monk. So I now have a full page of level 100 characters on Lightbringer. And I log on to WoW and I look at my server list and it's just a big page of level 100s. There are no free spots. There's nothing in progress and leveling. And I thought I would be excited, but it kind of bums me out. There's no, like, possibility of, of this is going to be super cool when I finish leveling it or I want to spend some time leveling this thing. It's, it's done. There's no more leveling on that server. So, of course, I can level stuff on other servers. And I do because I have a problem. But, uh, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but, um, I have 1100s, that means I have one of every class at level 100, with the exception I have no death knights and I have two druids. Uh, cause I like druids better than death knights. <laughs> um, one other holiday Christmas related thing was Steam. Steam royally butts up, um, on Christmas Day. We don't know exactly how it happened, but what happened was Steam had a really horrendous caching, caching issue that resulted in people being able to see... The info of other people when they logged into Steam. Not hackers, anybody. Like, anybody who logged into Steam was able to just, like, lo see somebody else's name and the last digits of their credit card and their phone number and stuff like that. So, pretty horrible privacy breach from Steam. I'm interested to see what kind of a, what kind of an explanation that they have for that. Um, so, they didn't, what was released was the name on your, if you look in your account page, you'll be able to see. Nobody was able to make any changes. Nobody was able to buy anything in your account. Um... It was just a cached version of a page that they were able to see. So if you have a Steam account uh, and you go look at your Steam account page, you'll be able to see exactly what they were able to see. So somebody may have your email address, they may have your name, they may have the last digits of your credit card and the last digits of your phone number. Essentially, I wouldn't worry, I wouldn't like freak out worrying because as is, if somebody did see your page, there's no guarantee that somebody did, but if somebody did, they don't have enough to go and like start shopping online. But I would keep an eye on your PayPal and your credit card statements just in case um, they do, they may have enough information to like social engineer um, like a, an email reset or something like that. If um, like they have, somebody could like call up, for example, I don't know, any, any company that you have an account with and say, hey, I lost access to my email, but I need to reset it. I have my name and my birthday and all this other information and, I, and that's me. And I'd like to reset it, and uh, you know the poor minimum wage employee on the other end of the phone may not know may not know that that's not you because they have all this information of yours. So uh, just keep an eye on your statements, basically, um, and just so you know right away if anything does happen. It's very unlikely, but it could. And then of course, always make sure you keep different passwords for everything. Nobody got your Steam password, but make sure you have a different password on your a unique password on your email account. Um, and every other account, of course, too, so that nobody, if they get one of your, if they get one of your passwords by some security breach, because it seems like we're always hearing about some company or another that's, like, leaking your information somehow. So if, if somebody gets one password, make sure that they don't have all of them attached to your email address, because that is how a lot of hacking happens. So practice good data privacy and, uh, and keep an eye on your credit card statements. I know I'm going to. Everything seems to be fine, but, uh, that was a pretty horrendous breach of privacy and I would not want to be at Steam right now. <laughs> mm. So, in terms of the channel, in terms of the Hazelnut Games channel, we passed 10,000 subscribers uh, yesterday. I want to say it was yesterday. It might have been the day before. I am so excited. Um, I am so super grateful to all of you guys that watch my videos because uh, y y if, if nobody watched my videos, I would just be some asshole making videos that nobody watches and that'd be okay. I'd probably still do it. But, uh, you guys are great, and I think 2016 is going to be a real great year. I read something on the internet this morning, and it's, it, was, it was a motivational quote of whatever. It was on a background of, like, a bear. I don't know. Um, if it wasn't on a bear, I should put it on a bear, because bears are, like, real cool. And it said, 2014 was practice, 2015 was warm-up, and 2016 is, is, is game time. It's your year. It's, it's go time, so... I'm really feeling that. I hope anybody who is needing motivation for the following year um, gets something out of that as well. 2016 is your year. You are behind it. You can do it. I believe in you. And anything that comes your way, I know that you can you can overcome. Um, I'm really excited. As far as the 10,000 subscribers specifically goes, I'm going to do a special edition vlog um, that should be coming out this week. And uh, where I just kind of, we're going to do like a retrospective. I will put all of the bloopers that I've saved up. I don't have that many bloopers, but I have a couple of bloopers that I've saved up from vlogs and games and whatever. So I'll, we'll do the bloopers. Um, I might do a flashback to my 100 subscribers thank you video because I went back and looked at that and oh my god, it's old. Uh, I mean, it's not even that old. It's from like, what, 2013, 2014? Um, but it feels really old and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, that vlog should be coming out sometime this week, uh, maybe early, maybe today, I don't know. Uh, and yeah, I wanted to do something cool. I really wanted to, and this is kind of random, but I really wanted 
to dye my hair green, like a dark green or put green streaks in it. I really wanted, I've had this image in my head and it would never turn out this well, but I had this image in my head of druid hair that's just like brown hair with like dark green in it, like like kind of like the image of like a, a mossy tree because I'm, I'm a little bit weird about druids. And also I really, I used to have green hair. I loved green hair. I thought I looked good with the green hair and I want it back, but I don't think I'm gonna do it because I'm too scared of hair dye. I have dyed and bleached my hair before in the past and it has always been fairly damaging to my hair and also my skin. I, I once gave myself a fairly bad bleach burn on the skin of the back of my neck and that took like three years to heal and it was really unpleasant. And I'm too cheap to go to a professional to get my hair actually professionally colored, even though that would, that was how, that's how you would make it look good is you'd go to somebody who knows what they're doing and be like, hey, this is what I want. But I'm way too cheap to do that. I'm too cheap. I, I cut my own hair. If you've ever wondered why my bangs are like always a little bit uneven, it's because I do them myself with scissors in my bathroom. And I have done so for years. I am cheap as hell. Uh, so I'm not going to pay anybody to get it done. So I probably won't do it myself. But I really want green hair. Maybe I'll get like clip-ins or like extensions, green, green hair extensions. That way I can have the green hair without actually having to mess with the chemicals. Maybe I'll do that. Anyways, um, I'm curious to know if you guys, if you guys have any New Year's resolutions, if there's anything in particular that you want to tackle, any goals that you want to set for yourself um, for New Year. I'm of the personal opinion that if you want to set a goal for yourself, if you want to make a change in your life, you do it whenever, you do it, you do it whenever. The best time's always now. Um, so I've never been a fan of waiting until you New Year's, but maybe you didn't really, maybe, maybe you just thought of something. Maybe you think this is a great time to think of a new goal and try it. It can be a little goal, it can be a huge goal, it can be a medium goal, um, it can be, it can be no goals, it can be a non-goal, but I mean, I'm just, I'm curious to know if any of you guys have any New Year's resolutions. Um, mine are all kind of related to, related to continuing to work hard and kind of grow, grow the YouTube channel. I want to I want to make as many and the best quality videos for this as I can, and that's really what I want to do in 6 2016. But I'm curious about what you guys want to do. And also, speaking of videos, the next one on the list is the Elemental Shaman Legion preview. Elemental Shaman is the next on that list, and I'm gonna move on to I think another healing spec after that. I might take a look at um, Rester Shaman after that. We'll see. Um, I've been meaning Feral Druid is kind of on the short list as well. I've been meaning to take a look at Feral Druids too. So uh, Elemental Shaman is definitely for sure these next. If you are interested in seeing what is coming up. And, uh, last little bit is no more streams until January. I'm taking an extra week off of streaming because my husband's gonna be home and I want to spend a bit of time with him and I want to catch up on videos. I took a couple days off around, the, around Christmas time to, uh, to relax and, and spend some time with my husband and, uh, we had some engagements to go do and now I'm home and I've got some time and I want to really sit down and buckle down and get some video work done. So I'm not going to be streaming this week. My next stream will be in January, uh, January the Friday. Okay, so I guess I will stream this week, but just not Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm going to stream on Friday, uh, and then we will be back at that time. Uh, all right, so questions. Um, these are from the week before last week, because last week I completely forgot about questions. Uh, but we're back on track, and the week before last week, Brian asked, Does your dog wear anything to protect it from the rain, like a raincoat or something? So my dog. Are you in here, bud? Joker, come here. So my dog. Ugh. Hey bud. Wanna say hi? Hello. He does not have a raincoat because he's got a big fluffy coat. He sheds his big fluffy coat everywhere all the time. And uh, now he doesn't have a raincoat. He doesn't really get super saturated wet. His paws get really wet. So we always tell off his paws when he come back in after he's been raining. Um, he does wear a backpack, but only when it's not raining. And the reason I, wear, I put a backpack on him when we go for like a good long walk is because I have to weigh him down so he gets extra exercise because he is a maniac and he is impossible to tire out no matter how far you go. So we uh, we throw a little backpack on him with some extra weights in it. Uh, nothing too heavy. And that, I found, has really helped slow him down and uh, tire him out a little bit more. And it's been good for strengthening his hips. He's got a bad hip and uh, he hasn't had nearly as many problems with it since I put a little bit of weight in his back when he go, when he go walking. So he does have a backpack, but we don't wear it when it rains because I don't know how heavy it would get when it's wet. And I don't want to, I don't want to add any extra weight with him that I haven't like pre-approved. So no backpack, but he does get a good towel off uh, when you bring him back after the rain. It's really cute. He, he doesn't really like it. Whenever he gets home, he immediately wants to like go run around in a circle and like make sure nothing's moved since he left, I guess. But uh, you make him sit in the towel and you make him lay down and you make him like roll over so you can like towel off his paws. And the whole time he's just staring at you like, I hate you. I want to go, but fine, you know. So yeah, my buddy, he hasn't said hi for a little bit. 
He's a real good sport. He's not nearly as cuddly as the cat. He doesn't really like cuddling that much unless he's in a very specific mood for it. But, uh, yeah, he's a good sport about it. Yeah, aren't you good? And then Damien asks, is there any new system or tournaments or something besides pet tamers that you would like to see implemented in Legion? So I did a video a couple of months ago, and I did link it to you, about my speculation of what direction they might take in Legion as far as adding a new tournament. Um, I've thought about it a little bit more, and I would really like to see some better incentives for PvP pet battles. Because right now, if you are going to PvP pet battle, the only things that you get for it are if it's during the pet battle bonus weekly event, which is incidentally the next one coming up. But if it's during the pet battle event, then you can get some valor points from it and a um, ultimate battle training stone. And if it's not during a pet event, then you're working towards an achievement for a stunted dire horn at, I think, 250 wins, which is a lot. And that's about it. And there, there's a title, I think, at a, at a great deal more wins than that. So there's a, one pet and there's one title. They are at ridiculous, staggering amounts of wins. And I think a lot of people don't really, well, I know at least myself, I don't really bother with PvP pet battles because it's not very well incentivized. And because um, it's very, like, whether or not you're going to win is very much dictated on whether, like, what, what pets you have brought, what pets your opponent has brought. And of course, there's some kind of metagaming going on to that. But there's always been a very established meta in PvP pet battles, in which case something is always is always good at the time, and it generally wins a lot until somebody figures out what to counter it, then everybody runs the counter, and then somebody figures out to counter the counter, and it kind of evolves like that. So it's not really... It's hard to improve at. It's a lot more to do with what everybody else is doing than what you personally can come up with, although, of course, personal decisions are going to come into it. Um, I would like to see better incentives for it, and I would also like to see... Some kind of change, and I don't know exactly what, because I'm not really a designer, but some kind of change that would make it a little bit more customizable, like pet, making pet battles a little bit more customizable in terms of PvP. Like, what if for every pet or every type of pet, or some types of pets, what if for every pet there is either one ability or a row of abilities, like a, like a third row or a special bonus ability, and you could slot that in any spot on your three slots. So you could say, let's say you have a bunny, Let's say bunnies have a special ability or a special row of abilities that you can unlock, maybe from like extra leveling that bunny. And you unlock that extra ability and you can put it in any one of the three slots. So if you don't like an ability that, what, that goes in like your third slot, for example, you could get a different one, a predetermined different one for that pet, but you can get a different one and put it in there. I think that would really allow a lot of extra customization in terms of your moveset. And that, I think that would play well into pet PvP. It would make things a little bit less predictable. Um, and I think it would also open up a ton more combo options. Because right now, as far as combos, things like, um, you know, you web a carrot, you web something, and then you leech life it so you're healing more because you're webbed, stuff like that. Or you stun something, and then you use takedown for extra damage. Your pet kind of, it either has the combo, or it doesn't have the combo. And in PvP, if you know a pet has a combo, it's either going to get off, or you're going to have a way to stop it. It's very black and white. And I think opening up a wider variety of combos with some kind of some kind of customizable bonus move that you could slot on top of your rotation, um, I think that would open things open up a lot of possibilities. If they did somehow manage to make pet battles in PvP a little bit more competitive and a little bit more popular, it would be so cool if they had a yearly tournament. Like, what if at, at BlizzCon you've got your Hearthstone tournament, your Heroes tournament, your Arena tournament, your Live raids, whatever? And you also have this little pet battle tournament. They could have a little area with, like, you know, just throw a bunch of fairy dragon plush in there. And you could have, like, like a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one pet battle duels. And you could crown a, you can crown a pet battle champion. And they could have, like, a really silly hat. I don't know. It sounds really cute. Um, I would like to see more rewards and more customiz customization options in terms of your, of your abilities. That would open up, more, open up more PvP. But I don't know. <sighs> Um, if Pokemon can do it, and Pokemon, despite being quite old, has a thriving competitive scene, if you've ever looked into what it takes to be a competitive PvP Pokemon player, it's ridiculous. It is so silly. The crazy things that people can do with Pokemon. And of course, with a Pokemon, you still only have four moves, but you have much more, like, the difference, and this is kind of what got me thinking about more moveset customization with WoW Pet Battles, is in Pokemon... You can customize that moveset significantly because as you level your pet up, of course, well, as you level your Pokemon up, of course, you can choose different abilities that you unlock and you can put them in any slot. So I think more moveset customization would lead to a better PvP pet scene, which would mean that it would be kind of cool to have better incentives and a tournament because I want to 
if, if there was a tournament, you can bet your butt that I would practice my ass off and try and come up with a way to compete in that because that sounds like so much fun. Ugh. So that has been my week. If you have a question you would like answered on an almost Saturday vlog, just leave it as a comment on the most recent vlog. These can be wow related. These can be personal related. These can be completely random. Um, as long as it's somewhat appropriate, I will answer it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.